Hello, everyone. Uh, so today we're going to talk about the merge conflict conflict. So as it states, do we apply before merge? Do we apply after merge? So uh, my name is Asaf Lubstein. I'm a solution architect at NF0. Been working with NF0 um, actually almost exactly a year from now. I started at last KubeCon in Chicago. Um, so one of the things that when we implement IC solutions uh, for customers with, uh, with open tofu, a lot of the times as part of the pipeline, there's usually some sort of validation, some sort of checks that are there, I will say 90% of the time, like format, validate, and a lot of times running plans. And usually one of the questions that I get asked the most is, okay, I ran the plan, I wanna run apply, when do I run it? Should I run it after I merge the PR? Or do I run it before, during the, the PR itself? So let's review both approaches and some of the pros and cons of them. So the apply after merge is something that most likely we're all familiar with from the application and software uh, lifecycle where we have our main branch we create a feature branch. We make changes, updates, commits, run the plan, and then we create a PR to merge it into our main branch. And then we have usually reviews, ideally another set of eyes that reviews the changes that we've made. We merge it into our main branch, and then we run uh, and then we run Terraform or OpenTofu apply. Um, the pros and the, the main benefits are that this fits the GitOps workflow as it was meant to be from the get-go. If you have application developers, this is something that fits very well within their uh, development lifecycle. And it also means that your main branch is always the source of truth. The biggest challenge there, have a raise of hand, how many people have had the plan be beautiful, successful, great, and then the apply fails miserably? <laughs> of course, this is something that, uh, that we see a lot and it really depends on the providers that you have because every provider implements their own set of how they run the plan and what checks are they doing. But that means that um, the successful plan doesn't necessarily guarantees and apply. And because of that, we can actually break our main break production. Adding on top of that, rollbacks can be very difficult. Be and let's take a look at this example. If we have Jane, creates a feature branch, updates, creates a PR, John approves the PR, and then we merge it after we had a successful plan, a successful review. The apply failed, and a lot of times it won't fail in the beginning, it will fail halfway through, so we have this kind of limbo state, half of our resources are deployed, half of them are destroyed, some of them are not working, and production is impacted. That means that in order to decide whether we want to roll back, whether we want to uh, troubleshoot or fix it, we can't simply roll back to a previous commit that is kind of against our GitOps structure. We have to go through the whole process again of creating a feature branch, update, and merge it again. At this time, if it's the end of the day, John may have gone home, we need to find another approver, and this, this entire time, our applications, our infrastructure is impacted. Now let's take a look at apply before merge. So the initial process is very similar. Create a feature branch, run commits, run plans. But this time we perform our review, ideally before we create the PR. And then from the PR itself, we actually trigger the apply. After the apply is successful, only then we merge to our main branch. The main benefits here is that we guarantee that our main branch is always green. If I need to roll back, I can just apply directly from 
um, from my main branch, I don't have to uh, create any PRs to it, any fixes. My main branch is always in a valid state. It also allows for faster iteration <laughs> troubleshooting because if the apply did fail, I can fix it within the PR. I don't have to fix it and kind of, um, um, I'll say overwhelm my, my main branch with a lot of unnecessary commits and a lot of necessary PRs. So it's easier to track the, the flow of the infrastructure deployment. Um, the cons is that this doesn't adhere to traditional GitOps flow. If you have a lot of uh, your ISC developers that came from the application development world, this see like you know, a mind-blowing experience, like what are you doing? Like this is not how it's supposed to work. Um, in addition, if I don't apply immediately, that means that I cause the drift between my main branch and my PR. Um, and in addition, state and plan management needs to adhere to this new process. I need to make sure that if I have two different PRs, I won't overrun some of the other PR changes or won't cause um, um, uh, maybe revert some of those changes if I didn't rebase main. And let's take a look at this example. So once again, we have Jane and John, and Jane is creating a feature branch, and John is creating a feature branch at the same time. John's change is a bit simpler, so he creates the PR and um, earlier. So some of the ways that we can prevent this contention is either creating a deployment queue or some solutions like uh, I believe one of the first to implement this approach is Atlantis in 2017 that does it using locking. So some of the, so basically when John starts creating a PR, that code, that state is locked until that PR is merged. Once he successfully applies and merges it, that state is unlocked and can be accessed again. The challenge there is that just because Jane was a bit late, <laughs> uh, because her change was a bit more, um, more involved, that means that right now she has to wait until John finishes before she can get back to work. In this time, someone else can come in and maybe sneak before she manages to, to get her work. And this entire time, she just sits and waits idly. Um, so which option is better? And since that's my title, it really depends. Um, some of the things to consider if you um, uh, an apply after merge better for you is if that is what your current pipeline does already. If, you, if it's the same developers that deploy um, application and infrastructure, it, doesn't ma it makes sense to have a consistent flow. If you have very large state, it can be difficult to manage them with uh, apply before merge. And, um, and as well, if you have trust with the providers that you're using. To apply before merge, if you run into a lot of failed applies, if that breaks your main quite a lot, and if your changes to your main branch require a lot of approvals, and as well, if you have teams that have kind of like this small scope of work that they won't run into any, um, any conflicts, that will be a great use case. Now the question is, is there a better way to do that? In application development, there's this concept of merge queues or uh, merge trains in GitLab, where the way that they Im each Im one implemented is slightly different, but basically you group a bundle of all of them together and then run all of the merges and tests at once, and how you handle rollback is slightly different for each of those. The challenge of can those same tools be used for infrastructure as code? The short answer is no, not at the moment. It's uh, application and, uh, I, and, code, and infrastructure code development is very different. Um, usually, application development happens on the exact same you know, containers and not on the production one, so it's very easy to, to roll back. Um, something that will be the holy grail for that is taking all of the merged uh, queue concepts and then adding 
I see dedicated uh, rollback and, of course, plan comparison and the idea to, to, um, to make sure that there's no overlap and, um, uh, between, and conflicts between the different PRs, and that is something that we hope that we'll see in the future. Thank you, and you can fill out the survey and let me know if you have any questions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.